we recently received a question regarding uh, all the different options and settings that you can do in Math Studio. So I just want to go over uh, some of them. So when you load up Math Studio, you have this tab right here, and you have a catalog of some of the different functions. You have options. You can search. Um, you can also have tutorials here. So let me focus on these different options that you can do um, or that you can change. So for instance, if I have a fraction, say, 24 over 37, the first time I evaluate it, it's going to give me a fraction. And the second time I evaluate it, it's going to give me a decimal. And so I can change the decimal notation. So right now it's at normal. If I change it to scientific, then when I evaluate it, scientific notation always puts one uh, digit in front of the decimal point. And so when I evaluate it again, I get 6.486486 times 10 to the minus 1. So there was a one digit in front of the decimal point. And then there's engineering notation, which puts three digits in front of the decimal point. You can also change the precision here. So if I only wanted four decimal digits, I can get this. Um, if I wanted, I can go all the way up to 16, but the internal precision is 16. So it you might not always get completely accurate answers by going to 16. So if you want to be safe, leave it at 15, or I usually don't need any more than than six decimals. Um, so let's see, fraction limit is interesting because here I'll show you. So 3.14159. If I hit enter, so Math Studio is going to interpret this as a decimal that could be rationalized. And so that's if your fraction limit is 1 e minus the, one, uh, 10 to the minus 6. If I change it to 1 over 1,000, it doesn't um, convert it to a fraction. It says, okay, it's beyond the, the limit, so I'm not going to convert it. But here, it'll convert it to a fraction. And then if you want to, if you just add a couple more digits, now it's beyond the, beyond the limit. Um, so angle mode can be a bit of a headache at first. So for instance, if I do sine of 5, I get that. Now if I do sine of 5 again and I, I change to degrees, now instead of uh, being sine of 5 in radians, it's sine of 5 degrees, and so I get uh, a different answer. But even though I'm in degree mode, if I do sine of x, I'm going to get a plot in terms of radians, because of this checkbox here, which says always graph in radians. If I uncheck that and then try to do it again, and I'm doing here a Apple Enter to go straight to a graph, now I'm getting it in degrees. And if I want to convert back to radians, I can just do uh, pi over 180. So if I do an Apple Shift P times x over 180, oh, I think it's the opposite. <laughs> 180 times x over pi. Yeah, okay, <laughs> there it was. Um, now I go back to radians. And so I always have this checked, and I always work in radians anyway, so um, I rarely get confused. But if you ever work with trig functions and you see something you don't expect, this would be the first thing I would check. So auto evaluate will evaluate all the entries when you open a file. When I, my files uh, usually have a lot of very long computations in it, so I always uncheck that because when I open up a, uh, one of those files, I don't want it to uh, sort of freeze up and take forever before I can start working with it. Smart solve reduces some expressions more than it would otherwise. Auto window, if you ever have a problem with you plot a graph and you try to change the window by clicking and dragging and it and it doesn't, uh, and it just kind of snaps back to the original window. Chances are you've got auto window clicked. And now notice, and I, I, I mentioned this because I want to want you to notice something here, which is that notice how all of a sudden this graph changed. And the reason is because the first time I evaluated this graph, I was doing it in degree mode with that unchecked. And as long as I don't touch it or mess with it or change it, it's going to keep displaying the same graph. But you'll notice how when I touch when I tried to move the window around, it reevaluated the function 
and it did so using these updated parameters. Okay, so you'll notice here that even though I've been changing these angle modes, these outputs have stayed the same. But if I were to reevaluate them, now I get using the current settings the given output. Okay, so again, if 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 Master Studio starts doing things you don't expect, just check these these options, or chances are you've changed these options in some way. Um, this confirm new uh, files can be somewhat important if I am doing this work and I either accidentally or I forgot that I saved and I do an Apple N to get a new file it asks me if I want to make sure because um, I have unsaved changes so if I uncheck this then if I do an Apple N now I've lost all my work okay so I'll just keep that checked so with 2D graphing and 3D graphing you have a few different options so with sine of X you can just check uncheck the grid the ticks go away and uncheck them both. Um, that's straightforward with sine of x plus y. Right now I don't have anything checked. So I've, if I want the 3D axis in, so I can look at you know x, y, and z and get smooth shade. Things like that. And then normal versus colored by height. So the color will reflect the Z value. Or then there's rainbow as well. And then now with the button pad, you can have no button pad. So that's this guy went away. Uh, portrait, you could have a small one. You could have a large one where it goes across the, the panel there. Um, I like to keep it at small. And then you can also adjust the height too. So if you want the button pad bigger, you can, or smaller, you can adjust it like that. And then these are some interface options for the way this looks. So if you'll keep your eye on the one here in the upper left hand corner, if I click open, it sort of differentiates each of these cells. If I click condensed, it pushes, pushes everything together. Um, the bar style, so again, look at the one. Right now it's on color. If I click none, the one went away. If I click color, it comes back. If I click bar, it goes to uh, silver, and if I click slim, it's still there, but uh, it's barely noticeable. And the reason why the bar is nice is because I can condense stuff that I'm not working on or I don't want to see the output of. And then you have the background color of the setting, so none, you have light, you have dark. Um, and you can also uh, show scroll bar, so you can't see any right now, but if I do another plot, so this scroll bar right here, if I want the actual scroll bar that I can click and drag, or if, like on my Mac, I usually use the two fingers on the trackpad. And then finally you have different color schemes, so you can do different colors. I like this black one with the green. Um, there's also black with white, um, and a bunch of just other color schemes. So that's all I want to do for this tutorial, and I'm going to make another one showing how to work with screenshots and to take uh, videos.